Johan Bessler's Gravity Wheel. Okay, before we start, you're going to want to download the PDF and follow along with me. I talk about two types of gravity motors. The first kind is like a teeter-totter or seesaw, and it just rocks back and forth. And so it goes one way, and then the balance is shifted a little bit, and then it falls the other way. So these don't produce a lot of power and they have to be very big and heavy to produce any usable power. And the second kind run on centrifugal force. They don't actually run on gravity, but gravity is part of it. Okay, so it actually takes energy to turn something in a circle and you can calculate it with the spinning weight and it takes eight times as much power in watts to turn something at double the speed. So you double the speed in RPMs, it takes eight times more power. So if you can harness some of that centrifugal force, so you double the speed, you get eight times more harnessable force. Now you can't harness 100% of the centrifugal force, but you can harness some of it. Okay, so take a look at this picture. So if you have a weight here, 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 and here, here you have the centrifugal force minus gravity, centrifugal force, gravity would be down. So what I mean is that uh, as far as the force from here to the center, right here you just have centrifugal force, okay? And here you have centrifugal force plus gravity, okay? And here you have just centrifugal force bringing it out from the center, and then you have the centrifugal force minus gravity. So, Johann Bessler's wheel will turn at a certain speed where there's enough gravity here to bring it in, okay? Brings it in here as it goes up, and then as it goes down, it brings it out. But it has to go in and out in a certain way, okay? With centrifugal force, you have a force from the center outwards. So if this weight was here, it would want to go out. Okay? Now, don't use sliders. Sliders have a lot of friction. It's really hard to build good sliders, and even the best sliders are going to have a lot more friction than a simple pivot. So, out from the center is from here to here. If it was on a slider, you know, you could make a slider, but there's not enough power in a uh, gravity wheel to uh, compensate for that amount of friction. So, like if I want this to go straight out, I would compromise. So I would have a pivot here, so it would go almost straight, okay? So, the centrifugal force is from here to here. And we want to turn the centrifugal force into rotational energy or tangential velocity. So we want this to go 90 degrees and go this way. So with Bessler's wheel, it's real simple. It starts going out and then it curves. Okay? So here, let's say this is our weight. Okay, you're going to want a, you know, 20, 30 pound weight at least. So we've set this up to be here, okay? This would be as far as in it it would go, okay? And then it would go out like that, okay? So that's either gonna accelerate or decelerate the wheel because it has to push against the frame a bit. So you're gonna wanna figure out which way your wheel will spin. So I have arrows in my diagram. Some of them are probably backwards. So if this goes forward, the wheel would probably want to go this way, okay? So again, the weight is going to travel. Let's say it goes this way. It goes in towards the center. And then as it goes here, instead of going out like this, it wants to go out like this. See that? It's a curve. Okay, and then as it 
it goes along and now when it goes back in you don't want it to curve back in because then it'll lose momentum okay so the trick is you need something special So this isn't fixed to a spinning wheel. Okay, let's say this wheel's on bearings. Okay, let's take this off. So this thing, okay, let's bring it around. It's going counterclockwise. So we'll go around. So as this comes out, we want this thing to be fixed to the wheel. So that would come out like that, right? So it's not just going, the weight's not just going out this way, it's going forward, it's going out and forward. So it's going to be something like, uh, something like that, I think. Anyway, you can figure it out. Okay, so, and then... Okay, so, so it's like these are fixed, so this goes out, and then this spins around, you know, 180, 90 degrees, whatever. Okay, so our weight is out. We want to bring it back in, but we want it to go straight back in. So this has to move. This has to move like that. So that this goes straight back in. Otherwise, it will slow down on its tangential velocity, or another way of thinking about it is it'll go lower, and then it'll have to be brought up more, okay? So you want it to swing out, you want these to be fixed here for a swing, so we want it to go out and forward, yeah, like that, and then come around, pretend this is in a circle. You know, this thing would be fixed all the way around until we want to bring it in. And as we bring it in, this thing will go forward so that our weight goes straight in. Okay, and then you want some kind of spring on this too, so uh, you save some of your energy and um, so you don't want this weight to move probably more than 10% of the radius. Now maybe Bessler's move more than that, but um, just try 10% of the radius if that's all you want it to move. And so you want, as it comes out, it goes forward. So you're turning some of that centrifugal force into forward motion, right? And if you have it backwards, it'll slow the wheel down. So the wheel will only turn in one direction. I hope it makes sense. So you need some complicated uh, engineering. Okay. Oh, got my paper here. Okay. So you can see. There's more force pushing it out here, and less force here because of gravity, but it runs on centrifugal force. That's the free energy force. And I show that in here. Yeah. I can find my uh, proper page. Okay, so there it is, the weight curving as it goes out. And this direction might be backwards, but as soon as you build it, you're going to know whether it speeds up or slows down when the weight comes out. And so, so you want it to curve as it goes out, and probably you don't want it to make that full curve. You probably just want it half a curve, right? Half a curve. You see this here it's from this website. I found it. It's a circle, so it's on a uh, on a pivot. Okay. So your weight sort of wants to go, uh, I guess it, it, this arrow is backwards. If it was following this, it should be like mirrored. So anyway, it wants to go out. And you want the weights to sort of fall straight down. 
Um, so anyway, here I showed you this. You have this here, I have a pivot here. So this thing goes out and forward. The weight goes out and forward, then it goes straight back in. Now, I don't think I have them here. Let's see, if you don't bring this, if you let this go backwards, then it'll slow the wheel down, and also you'll end up with, say, you know, if your wheel's going this way, you'll end up with, say, you know, one, two, three weights here, and then one, two, wait, sorry, that's backwards. You'll end up with one, two, three, four, five weights on this side of the wheel, and like three here, because they, they fall down, All right? So you, you have to be careful. You don't, you want them to fall forward and accelerate the wheel, sort of, but you don't want them to fall backwards because you don't want to, the weights to be on more on one side than the other. Okay, so that's one way of turning the centrifugal force as a weight. If this is spinning fast enough. There's a lot of force on that. So if you let it move a little bit, you need a way of turning that into the forward motion. Now there's other ways. For example, so you have this spinning around, it would lift this weight up, okay? So you could have a machine that turned this around and it pulled on this, and as it pulled on that up, then, you know, this would be on the flat, you know, centrifugal. Uh, as it pulled on this, it made this spin faster, okay? Now that would probably work, but then once your ball got out too far, then you have to find a way to bring it in without losing your momentum. And the more you let this out, the less centrifugal force there is because it's a bigger curve. So you really want the weight to go in and out during the rotation. So um, here's Johann Bessler's wheel, and that's how you want to do it. You, know, you have springs set up here. But you don't want these things to just fall out and go clunk, right? because you want them to be going tangential to the wheel. So you want to keep all your forces very close to be tangential to the wheel. So you don't want the weight to move out too much or too quickly, just a little bit, but you want us to do a lot of work and that little bit of motion. Uh, our head 100, I think, on YouTube has, has some good research on that. Right, so you want it to spin as fast as possible and you want the weights to move as little as possible and you want to turn that movement you know outwards into forward motion